Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. So today we are gonna be doing a quilting play-by-play -play where you actually get to see me quilting in real time by having a GoPro camera attached to the handlebar mount of my long arm. Um, today we are working on Quilting Subway, which is our latest release in our Stashing with Stephanie subscription club. We're gonna have to sit through a little explanation on that before we get to the explanation of how to do straight line quilting on the long arm without channel locks because I hate them. So we'll get to why I hate them in a little bit. So Stashing with Stephanie is a subscription club that we started about four years ago. We now have over 800 members and everybody who's in the club they pay $29.99 a month plus shipping, and we send them 10 fat quarters for that. Plus you get a free pattern that has been inspired by the collection. So I get the collection, I look at it, I let it percolate in my mind, and then I come up with something that utilizes the collection, I hope, to its fullest ability. And this month's one is Subway. You can watch the piecing video on that. We have a tutorial to go with the pattern. And they also get exclusive discounts on additional fabric, plus uh, first dibs on getting additional fabric. And let me tell you, that matters because we don't have as much this month as we typically do. And the chatter in our Facebook group on this has been intense. People are really excited about it. As soon as I sent the email out with a pattern and that everything was live for people to be able to get and use their discount to get additional fabric on, like, my phone is blowing up. I had to put on airplane mode just so I could film this video without it digging constantly while we're chatting. So I'm not sure how much fabric is gonna be left by the time we release our piecing video to the rest of our email list on YouTube. And I definitely don't know how much is gonna be left by the time you see this video a couple days after, but it's a good club to be on. You also get um, exclusive discounts on my two Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop, and also you get access to our entire pattern library of Fat Quarter Patterns, which is over a $200 value as long as you're a member. So great club, lots of good freebies, great way to quilt on a budget. Fabric prices are going up. This fabric is now going at $12.50 a yard, $12.50. That is the highest I've ever seen it. It is not going to get better with inflation and worldwide drama and issues. And I don't wanna make light of it, but it means that everything is gonna get more expensive. So this is a great way to be able to still quilt and be able to afford that on your budget because you get those exclusive discounts and you get the exclusive discounts on the um, fat quarters that you get plus any additional fabric that you want if you really like it and wanna make it into a quilt. So enough on that, let's get into the actual quilting of it. So if you're doing ruler work on your long arm, you're gonna need a couple of things in order to make that happen. The first one is a ruler base. Now this is clear, it might be a little challenging to see, but this is what it looks like. Um, it's this part right here slides over your long arm and just sits on it. And then the plate fits right in there. And what it does is typically your long arm is only, you know, this wide. And so if you're gonna put a ruler on it to do anything, it just flops around. Uh, but what this does is it expends, send your working space. You can see I can move quite a bit around here and this ruler does not flop anywhere. So that is really awesome. Um, this is my like ride or die ruler. If you are just doing work on your domestic sewing machine, unless you have an incredibly large throat space, this is probably not the ruler for you. Um, but the Natalia Bonner 4-in-1 is just absolutely fantastic for long armors. This is one I'm using probably 90% of the time when I am quilting on my long arm. It's got the curve on the top. I use that pretty often. I do not use the curves on the side too often, but the straight line is really awesome. And then it also has, it has a bunch of numbers on there. So I'm able to line in this case up, I want to do one inch increments and half inch increments. So I was able to line up this half inch increment line with the bottom of my seam in order to get perfectly spaced lines as I was going through. And we'll talk through that in a second. Now, one of the other things that still seems to be a problem to get um, because of ongoing pandemic issues is thread. So I did not have enough white thread to do this. Normally I would quilt this in white thread. And my original plan was to do one quilting line down the center of the piece rows and one quilting line down the center of the sashing rows, but I did not have enough white to make it through this quilt. So instead, I used 
cool gray. Number three from Glide. This is one of my favorite thread companies. My It behaves so well in my APQS Lenny. I have not tried it in any other long arm machines, but everyone who I know has an APQS, like this is the thread to use with it. I use the 40 weight and I use the same in the bobbin as well. So I have this really light gray and it just would have looked ridiculous if I would have sewn it through uh, the sashing strip as well. Like as I was going around originally and going around the edges to tack it down, it just looked bad. So what I decided to do instead was quilt my lines so that I was a half inch above this seam and then one inch above it. So that way there is a one inch space in between. And, but then there's another half inch in between this quilting line and that. So that way in this seam here. So it's nice and evenly spaced. It looks good. There isn't too much space in between these. I think it is a two inch space in between these quilting lines. Looks really fantastic. And because it is that really light gray, it does blend really well, including on these lighter bits here. It looks very good and it just works well. It, it looks good there. It would not have looked good here. So, you know, sometimes you gotta compromise. You gotta do what works with the materials that you have on hand and you gotta be flexible with it. So before we get into the actual quilting, I'm gonna talk about why I hate channel locks on a long arm machine. Now, if you are not a long armor, a channel lock is essentially a little knob that you can turn that makes your sewing machine only go left to right. You can, it won't go all around and do all the things that you wanna do. Um, if you're doing free motion with one of those. You can just go straight lines back and forth. Um, and that sounds like an awesome thing for when you're doing straight line quilting, but I personally would never ever use them because it is assuming a couple things. One, that my leaders that I'm pinning my quilt top onto are straight. Mine have never been straight from the minute that I took it out of the box. So there's strike number one against those. If it has not gotten better with time. And I have like unrolled them and re-rolled them and tried to do it perfect and it just never straight, probably never will be straight. Not a problem, it's not like horribly crooked, but it certainly is not straight enough to where I can just boom, go down and have it be a perfect half inch away from the seam every single time. Um, then the other thing is it assumes that you loaded your quilt on, let's say your leaders are straight but then it assumes that you loaded your quilt on. Absolutely perfect. Um, has, have any of us ever done that where it's like absolutely perfectly straight? I mean, close, it's been certainly close, but it's certainly not always the case. And then also it assumes that you were absolutely perfect in your piecing and that the fabric didn't wobble just a little bit here or there because you know that all happens too, despite our best efforts. So for those three reasons, just not my thing. I'm never ever gonna use channel locks. Um, there certainly are applications, like if you were just doing straight lines and like a whole cloth quilt, no one's ever gonna know. You can square that up later. But for my purposes, where I want it to be exactly a half inch away from here, and then exactly a half inch away from this seam, I am not gonna get the results I want if I do that. So that's why I opt for some ruler work. So I'm gonna show you how I do that next. All right, so I'm about to start stitching my second row. So I start by pulling that bobbin thread up to the top. That's always step number one. Then I'm gonna anchor that stitch in place so I don't have to worry about it coming apart later. Now I've got that half inch line on the ruler that I showed you at the beginning lined up exactly on top of that seam allowance. And there's kind of a sweet spot in the ruler. So when we look at the ruler, it goes from here to here. I want to kind of be in a little bit from there. So here are the ends of my ruler. I want to only quilt inside of this. And so I only go from like one inch to the center to, to about one inch from the end. And that allows me to hold it without it swapping all over the place. And it ends up working out really well for me. So I'm quilting about maybe eight inches at a time. Then I am stopping the uh, needle with the needle down and then I turn the machine back on and keep on going and I'm just going to repeat this step going all the way down the length of the quilt and it's very very fast I think it took me one to two minutes per pass um, of the line so really really nice so when you're done you're going to want to seal your threads off I usually quilt off a little bit in this case um, that way I can just uh, catch all those extra lines in my binding when I attach that later 
All right, so now we're just gonna travel back. My machine does not like to go from right to left. It only likes to go from left to right. It'll, thread, it'll shred the threads if I go the other way. So we're gonna start again by bringing that bobbin up to the top and securing that. And you kind of get to know like where the different distances are, but you can see I kind of was close on that one inch estimation, but not completely. So what you need to know when you are doing this is that when you have that ruler foot on the long arm, the one that has that full circle around, um, that is the outside of it is exactly a quarter inch away from the needle. So as long as you have that foot in line with and in contact with the edge of your ruler, you're gonna be able to quilt whatever shape you want. And in this case, I'm able to quilt a straight line exactly one inch away from my previous line. So this time I'm lining that one inch line up on top of my previous stitching line as I work my way down. And I'm still, you know, avoiding the ends. I'm only quilting maybe six inches or so at a time, six, seven inches. And I am just doing my best to avoid those areas. The other thing I find is a lot easier for me to hold the ruler underneath the line of stitching than to try to flip it around and do it on top. I, I have, it's much less steady than I get a lot more hand movement. But for me, if I can just hold it beneath and then I can, you know, move a little bit um, as needed. Also, my machine has a stitch regulator, so I don't have to worry about every time I have to stop to, you know, reposition this, this down for a little bit further. I don't have to worry about my stitches ending up being different lengths. So I just have that automatic stitch regulator on at all times and I've got the needle down position um, always set. So that way when I turn the machine off so that I can reposition everything, we're good to go. And I've been using this um, technique for uh, four or five years now and I still most almost all the time will completely stop the needle in the down position before I move that ruler even for a simple design like this because if I don't do it I'm much more likely to have it not be a straight line there's gonna be a little wiggle in there because I jostled something somewhere or I lost track my brain was wandering or something so it is just easier for me to completely stop it with the little button on your handlebar reposition the ruler, start it again, and keep on going. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. It's really a short and simple one. Um, I really like the way that this turns out though. I think the look of it is really utilitarian, but also chic and modern, um, very minimalistic. It looks great. And if you are a home sewer on your home sewing machine, you can just do straight line quilting with this and that would be totally fine too. You could reposition the edge of your walking foot along this seam and then position the other side of the edge of your walking foot along this seam and you would get similar results where you're gonna have lines that are equally spaced going straight down the centers. If you wanted to, you could even throw a line down the center here, maybe go back over that in white thread later. Um, there's lots of possibilities for you and you can still get the same look without having to get a giant expensive machine that's gonna, it needs its own dedicated room for. So this is a really good versatile stitch. It's one that I go to again and again and it's very fast. I think this entire quilt was done in about three hours for a twin size quilt. So really, really quick, quick uh, process of quilting there and a way to get a lot done. All right, so check out Stash with Stephanie over on our website, shop.quiltnatisanonymous.com. If you sign up by the end of April, so the 30th, then your first bundle will ship around the 20th of May. If you do not sign up until after the 1st of May, then you're gonna have to wait until around the 20th of June to receive your first bundle. That always gets people and then we always get angry emails and we always do our best to explain it in the videos and then also in the follow-up emails that we send you guys. But we, all, we always get people who miss that fact because they didn't take the time to, to read through it. So I just wanna make that super clear because we want you guys to be excited and anticipating your fresh bundle, not ticked off because you didn't realize that if you wait until May 1st to sign up, then you're gonna have to wait about six weeks to get that bundle. So the reason why we do that is because we, need to know exactly how many bundles we need to ship out because it's a lot. We have over 800 bundles to, to cut and that means 8,000 fat quarters. That's, that's a whole, whole lot. And we're trying to move as quickly as possible so that way we can get everything to everybody in a timely manner. And then the second we drop that email, letting everybody know the pattern and extra fabric is available, it is a mad 
stash to get additional fabric. And we don't want anybody to miss out on that because their, or their renewal payment comes out the 30th and so they're not gonna get their bundle until say the 5th and by then all the fabric is, is all gone. So that would not be fair and it would not be very fun for everybody. So this, it works out the best. You just have to wait a little bit for that first bundle to come and then it'll come around, we'll ship around the 20th of every month like clockwork from there on out. All right, well, that's all for today. And until next time, happy quilting. <laughs>